Hello folks and welcome to Paddock Pass, your pre-race edition for the 2018 Italian Grand Prix. Welcome to, and we say it every year, La Pista Magica, this theatre of speed. It is truly a glorious place for a race. Sunny today, apparently might rain tomorrow, which reminds us, of course, of that 2008 weekend when the heavens opened and it bucketed down and through it all, Sebastian Vettel incredibly emerged victorious. You might not think that is um, so hard to believe, save for the fact that 10 years ago, Sebastian Vettel wasn't driving a Ferrari nor a Red Bull, but a Toro Rosso. It was a mad weekend. I remember it because it was the weekend that they fired up the Large Hadron Collider for the first time at CERN in Switzerland. And between Spa and Monza, I'm rambling and we're literally 30 seconds into Paddock Pass, sorry. Anyway, um, we decided to go up to Lugano and then we spent like a day in Switzerland and we went up a mountain and, uh, and we went up the mountain and it was really cold and still snow up there and I was in my shorts and um, don't worry the story does go somewhere and uh, as we were up there the sky turned black and started coming in very quickly and we thought it was the end of days we thought they fired up the Hadron Collider and the world's going to end and it literally stayed black sky and torrential rain for three days and as we got here I remember the morning practice session and it was like the dead of night and it was 10 o'clock in the morning it was crazy anyway Seb went all through that and emerged victorious it was quite the weekend we'll talk to him later in the show things to look forward to let's start down here though at Renault and a driver who finished the last Grand Prix in Spa before he'd even reached the first corner Big crash for Nico Hülkenberg. He's taken a 10-place grid drop here in Monza. Let's hear from the German. Do you think the penalty was fair? Uh, fair, not fair. I don't care. Does that rhyme? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it does, actually. Um, you know, Roman did a similar thing, and he got a plus three in Barcelona. Um, I took one more car out now um, and probably looked a bit more spectacular on TV. I got a plus ten. You know, whatever. I was expecting a penalty, so... Uh, that is fine, I won't argue with that. I mean, he did a similar thing in Spa and got a race ban. Yeah, but that was a very different story. I mean, that was a few years ago and leading up to that event, he had so many incidents that year in, in, in first laps and I think that was just, yeah, it just stacked up to too many mistakes and then that, that's why the race ban came around. I think you can't compare the two at all. I mean, they look similar in a way of accident, but, you know, I'm... I haven't had such a history on lap one, so I don't think uh, that's appropriate at, at all. Does it affect your mindset, uh, having had an incident like that coming into a weekend like this? When you're sitting on the grid on Sunday morning, will you be thinking about that? Can you allow yourself to, or is everything different? Because we don't exist within a racing driver's mindset. I don't know how you... Yep. If we have a crash on the road, we, we think about it the next time we get into a car. But for you guys, is it just gone the instant it's over? I don't know, I'll see you on Sunday, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, no, I, to, to a certain extent, of course, you put it out of your system, out of your mind, but there might be some element of you know caution because I'll, I'll be starting from the back again with that penalty. So, you know, I want to make sure I, I get further than three days ago. Uh, the race itself didn't look so hot for Carlos. Obviously, he'd had issues in qualifying as, as well. Are you worried that, that Renault's gone off the boil a little bit in relation to, to Haas and Force India in that very important fight for fourth? I think we we just had a couple of tough weekends and Budapest wasn't great, Spa wasn't great. Here looks maybe difficult, but you know I think the momentum during a season always you know goes from one team to another team and and now it's with Haas a little bit and not with us. But I think we you know we have we have all the means and the tools to change that in Singapore again and, and bounce back and fight back. You know, the team is very eager and motivated um, and pushing hard still. So, you know, the fight is nowhere near or nothing like lost. You know, it's just a little bit of a difficult period, but we will, we will bounce back. And the difficult point is going to be you and Haas fighting for that fourth place, but Force India are still in the mix. They're not fighting for fourth anymore, but they could take critical points off you guys. Yeah, they could be quite useful in the way that they could hopefully take points of Haas for us. And if we're ahead, that might be a tactical <laughs> uh, help. But, you know, let's see how things pan out. Um, it's still a lot of races to go and just got to keep a cool head. So as we mentioned in that one driver who knows only too well what it is like to make such a large faux pas at the start of the Belgian Grand Prix, Romain Grosjean down here uh, at Haas. So let's go uh, and talk to him. Obviously a great weekend for Haas in Spa. Double point score on a weekend where Nico Hülkenberg and Carlos Sainz both failed to score points. Uh, yeah, it's brought the American team right up there in the battle for fourth in the Constructors' Championship. 
Yeah, it was great. It was great. You know, it was uh, it was not an easy weekend. We started a bit on back foot and then uh, came back on Saturday, and then the quality went a bit wet, uh, and we managed to pull out a, a great lap uh, and then a good race. Uh, unfortunately, for you know, we're a bit too fast, so we couldn't get them in a race and and couldn't get as many points as we could have. But anyway, I think double points was really nice. Both cars working very well, and very much looking forward to Monza and uh, all the race to the end of the year. Hulkenberg helped you guys out at the start a little bit. You've been in his shoes. You've had a little moment at the start at Spa. How difficult is it when you've had a moment like that, the next race start that you do to get your, your head back in the game and not make the same mistake twice? Um, actually, next race start is not that much of a problem. Coming back to Spa every year is a bit more a challenge. Oh, really? Still, still now? Yeah, still now. Six years ago, and when I'm on a grid in Spa, I'm always a bit careful from what happened there. Do you, I don't, do, do you, do you see sort of people, like sports psychologists, about those kind of things, like, like figuring through them, working it out? Yeah, I mean, I started seeing someone in 2012 after Spa, and it hasn't stopped since then. So, you know, every time, every, every time in life, everything is a new challenge, and new things to deal with. And, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a rough time early this year, and being able to bounce back and, and come back and do some great racing took some, uh, some work. Um, so I think it's uh, to me right. It's the right way to go, and, and what I need to make sure that uh, I perform well, and uh, to make sure I not make the same mistake again. Some fascinating stuff there from Romain Grosjean. Much the same uh, as we we heard last week from Marcus Ericsson, just about that level of introspection which drivers have, and I hope opening up some level of understanding of how a racing driver's brain works, which I've found uh, always found absolutely fascinating uh, anyway so that is Roman Grosjean somebody who in his uh, later years as a racing driver uh, really is I think more and more becoming that elder statesman and exuding class down here to Sauber then and to Charles Leclerc the innocent victim of that first corner fracas uh, in Spa Francorchamps and much has been made of course in the days between Spa and here in Monza about the role that the halo plays uh, in ensuring that Charles Leclerc wasn't uh, injured in that incident whether you are a fan of the halo or not what is undeniable is the fact that as Alonso's car came over the top the trailing right front wheel made contact with the halo with sufficient force to completely obliterate the right front suspension. Would the tyre have made contact with Charles Leclerc's helmet or not? We will never know and we will never know because the halo was there. Well, we might know actually because they might do, you know, virtual, you know, mapping and do it all together and we'll know. But anyway, halo was there. And so we don't really need to know because it's it's done its job. Let's talk to Charles about his views on that accident, on the halo, and of course what it means to him to be coming back here to Monza, uh, to a track which, as the Ferrari Junior, not just as someone who's driving for Alfa Romeo, but as the apple of the Tifosi's eye and the driver seen as the future of Ferrari. Uh, yeah, his thoughts on coming to race in Italy. But first, his thoughts on the halo. Well, I mean, I have no idea if it saved my life, life or not because we, we don't know what will have happened without it, but it's definitely better to have it over the head in these situations and I, and I believe that in some situations it can, it can, uh, it can help the drivers uh, for, the, for the safety. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's a good thing to have. Took away the start from what could have been quite a good race for you. Marcus had a, a great race out there. Uh, how positive do you feel coming here into another power circuit? I mean, I'm always positive. I think it's the right way to uh, to start a weekend. Uh, it's a bit of a shame because we have been quite unlucky in the last few races. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you said, I think it, it should be quite a good uh, competitive uh, track for our car. And I hope we can uh, prove it and then finish the first lap this time. It's kind of a home race, obviously, for Alfa Romeo. But also, you are already beloved by the Ferrari fans, by the Tifosi here. What's it like coming to Italy, knowing that the Ferrari fans don't just see you as an Alfa Romeo driver or a Sauber driver. They see you as the future of their team. Yeah, I don't know how they see me, but uh, one thing is for sure is that I have always had a lot of support uh, from them and this feels absolutely amazing. I mean, I think I have more support here than when I came to, to Monaco, uh, which, is, uh, yeah, which is nice to see and it gives an extra boost to the whole team and, and all, including myself. Uh, for the weekend. And so to McLaren, a horrible weekend for the team in uh, Spa. Of course, Alonso chucked out at the first corner from the Hulkenberg incident. Uh, and Stoffel van Dorn. Oh, look, a new floor for Toro Rosso. Or maybe just the existing floor. I don't know. 
as it was in its sleeping bag. A horrible weekend for Stoffel van Dorn. Finished every single session last. Practice, quali, uh, yeah, and the race. Shocker. Uh, and he's not having a great time of it. If you believe some articles, he'll, he's out of Formula One next year, which would, I think, be a crying shame and a, and a, a terrible loss for the sport. A brilliant driver, a brilliant champion. At least it can't get any worse, though, right? Uh, I don't think there was much uh, satisfaction coming out of uh, out of my home Grand Prix. Um, you know, it was obviously a very difficult weekend. We had a lot of uh, a lot of troubles, but uh, yeah, I mean, this weekend is a new race, so um, you know, we've put everything uh, behind us and and uh, tried to come to Monza and, and hopefully do a little bit better. We know it's uh, it's not going to be easy. Probably uh, you know, one of our toughest circuits on the, on the calendar, but. So far, it looks like uh, some rain might be on the, on the schedule, so hopefully that's a, that's a chance for us. How do you stop this wider world from forgetting who Stoffel van Dorn is and everything that you're capable of? I think I've proven a lot in the past with all the you know all the junior championships I've won. I've, uh, you know, I'm probably one of the most successful junior drivers that uh, that is you know in the in this paddock. Um, I think the situation we've had the past couple of two years. Here at McLaren has uh, has definitely not been ideal with uh, all the problems we've been uh, we've been running through, and uh, I think uh, you know even compared to Fernando, I think I've been I've been very close, not always in the in the ideal conditions, and uh, I think uh, yeah, uh, at the moment our, our general performance is just not not strong enough. So there's nothing nothing really we can do about that. What does the future hold for you next year? Do you know yet? Alessandro, your manager, is, is on the record as saying you're 100% staying in Formula One next season. Um, I don't know yet at the moment. Um, you know, I think uh, it's it's a time of the year where things are are moving. Obviously, uh, you know, in, in in Formula One, the last couple of days, every day has been changing uh, with the, with the, with the market. So we'll we'll wait and see. And so, from a driver for whom things could not have gone worse in Spa, to a driver and a team uh, that really exceeded expectations. Pierre Gasly and Toro Rosso finished in the points on a track at which they weren't expected to be competitive because, as we know, Honda is not great on power circuits, and yet. They were brilliant. Now, does that mean they're also going to be brilliant here in Monza? It may be a bit much to ask on the 10th anniversary of that famous win for Sebastian Vettel. Um, an interesting chat coming up with Pierre Gasly. I've got to say, both on that subject and moving forward, his relationship with Honda is far more than just this year. He raced in Super Formula last year uh, with a Honda engine. And uh, you're going to hear me reference a conversation that we had in Baku last year and it was a conversation where I'd asked him how things were going in Super Formula and he said look it's taken me a long time to understand it but actually feeding information back to my engineers as I used to do in Europe doesn't work in Japan because there is this hierarchical structure and so I found that what I was telling to my engineers wasn't actually getting back to the people that would be making the changes on the car and furthermore to their bosses and their bosses and their bosses. There was this structure in place that he had to get his head around because of the way that uh, uh, the Japanese hierarchical structure in, in business and in sport works. Got his head around it in Super Formula and suddenly his Super Formula season came alive and he very nearly won the championship. Uh, didn't get the chance to fight for that win because it rained off final race. Anyway. Now he's here with a Honda engine in the back of his car. Next year he goes to Red Bull at the same time that Honda's moving to Red Bull as well. The link in the chain all the way through with Honda is Pierre Gasly. And I think he finds himself in an incredibly strong position, not just because of that consistency, but because he spent that time in Japan and understands how to get the most out of that very unique way of operating. Some really interesting stuff from Pierre Gasly. Spa was really unexpected. Uh, we thought we will struggle more than, than we did. Uh, I think Monza is still uh, on another level uh, where the, we spend like I think 80% 80, 80 of the track flat out. So as a driver you can't do much except pushing the throttle pedal as hard as you can but it doesn't change much. Um, so no I think it's not going to be easy but we saw that probably we look a bit stronger than, than we expected, so uh, hopefully we, we will have a good surprise with this weekend, but yeah, we, we need to stay um, objective and, and really work out um, in free practices and, and see what, what we can do uh, this weekend. Honda obviously made some big steps forwards this year with the power unit, but I remember talking to you last year, it was actually when we were in Baku, and you were talking about Super Formula and how you hadn't really understood how to deal with Japanese people at the start and had to learn 
how to feed those messages back. Has what you learned in Super Formula helped you this year with the relationship with Honda and, and, and getting them to, to work the power unit in a way that you, you, you want them to? Um, yeah, I think clearly it helped a little bit. And, and in a couple of situations, I think we avoided some mistakes with uh, miscommunication or misunderstanding between them and, and ourselves. So clearly it has been uh, it has been really positive, all the experience I, I've learned from, from Super Formula. And also for the team, um, I know they've done some Japanese lessons uh, ahead of the season and, and clearly I think it's been positive. Um, after, I, they, they did a really good job in the beginning of the year in terms of reliability. I think it's been really positive um, comparing to, to the last few years. Drivability has been fantastic. Uh, we just need that extra uh, performance in terms of, of pure power, um, which is things which will come. Um, but yeah, we, we got to be uh, patient and, and give them the, the time they need. Yeah. With you going to Red Bull Racing next year and Red Bull Racing taking Honda engines, are you the the, the, the consistency, are you that, from for Honda's perspective anyway, to be three years now with Honda, working that relationship with them? I think it's a really good story, you know, I started my relationship with them in Super Formula without knowing what was going to happen in the next uh, two, three years, so, no, I'm really happy that they made the step to Toro Rosso when I did it, um, and now they, they're going to make the step to Red Bull, as I'm going to do it as well, so uh, we are kind of following each other uh, since... I started with them in Super Formula, so I'm really happy with uh, with the story. They they give me a massive support as well um, because I've know how to. Uh, I've met all of them in Japan in Super Formula. I know all the bosses, and and they're really happy with the with the job I do at the moment. And it's great to work with people that uh, gives you that much support. So uh, hopefully we're gonna keep the story uh, going for for a while and achieve uh, great things together. And so to Force India, or as we should call them, Racing Point Force India, who were racing for points and achieved them in Spa. A big old bag of points as well to sit just one point behind Sauber and the Constructors' Championship. They might not still be in that fight for fourth, but they are very much in the fight, as we saw with fifth and sixth place on track in Belgium. Lots of talk still about where both drivers end up next year, with rumours that both of them may end up at McLaren. Not together, because Carlos Sainz has already got one of those seats. You see what I mean? There's rumours that either one of them could end up there. One of them saying here, who knows? Is it our job to guess or is it our job just to educate and inform and explain the reasons why once they've moved? That is a philosophical question and a debate for another time. But for now, let's uh, speak to Esteban Ocon. Spoke to uh, Sergio Perez earlier today. Uh, he's looking forward to this weekend. Uh, knows where he's going to be racing next year, but can't tell us just yet. Is waiting for the team and his uh, sponsors uh, to be able to let us know that. But let's speak to Esteban again about Spa and a little bit about those rumours about where he ends up next year or maybe even this. Woking. It's quite a nice town. I hear you've been there. It is a nice town, but... Uh... No, I haven't been there, no. In the, in the recent days, I haven't been there. Like Not in recent days. Apparently, you had a seat fit, though. Was that there? No comments. <laughs> but we've, you've made a comment. You've, you've admitted that you had a seat no. fit, but no? I, I saw it was, conf I thought it was confirmed that you'd had a seat fit, but that you were a little too tall. <laughs> no, never no. said that, no. Oh, OK. I saw the news like you, but no. Oh. Interesting. It, it's all up in the air, isn't it, at the, at the moment? Do you have any more idea than we do about where you're going to end up next year or, or even this you know at, at the moment i have no no news uh, really to to tell you um, we are all working hard obviously uh, to try sort out my future um, when i will have more news i will let you know but at the moment i have nothing to to tell you and all you can do i guess is just keep doing what you're doing which was a phenomenal job in spa have you replayed that first lap in your mind over and over because the slingshot was ridiculous and yeah. you were what was it like a like a meter maybe yeah 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 i've, I've replayed it not only in my mind I, i've yeah tried to think what i could have done different um there wasn't much I, I could have done different and you know this this one meter was crucial to get more i took the safe decision i don't regret anything it was close for me to take the lead obviously but um you know, uh, to finish uh, fifth and sixth already was a good, uh, good achievement for the team, for everyone. And uh, I'm happy with how the race ended. It, it was a phenomenal result for you guys. I don't think you could have achieved any more. 
obviously you're not in the fight for fourth in the constructors anymore, but you've got a, but you've got a car that is going to be in those positions and fighting for those positions. How high do you think the team can actually finish this season? Yeah, I did bet with the guys that we could finish eighth, but we are we are already You're only a point off. Yeah, I know. So <laughs> easy bet. I'm lose that. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I did I did that before the before Spa. So, but we'll see. You know, um, everyone is is pushing hard in F1, and we had a good weekend, but we can't uh, sleep on it. You know, uh, this weekend it's uh, all reset. You know, and every weekend will be reset. So. Uh, that's how we have to approach, that's how we have to keep working, and that's how we'll get there. But the investment now means you will get the Singapore upgrade that you were supposed to be getting. So, you know, the team is not just standing still, we'll be moving no, no, forward. Exactly, exactly, and that's what that's what we are doing. And, uh, and you have to see that upgrade and to test it, it's going to be great. Now, Force India, uh, as we said, had a great race in Spa. One driver that I thought had a sensational race in Spa, even though he didn't score points, was Sergei Sorokin. For me, my driver of the race last week. Um, and as we said in the post-race paddock pass, it's just because he he recognizes those little steps, those little gains, that's ultimately going to help that team take the, the big leaps towards the front. Um, I'm so impressed with him. I'm so impressed with his work ethic, with the way he goes about his job, with the way he drives. You know, the results might not always be there if you just look at it on a results basis. But I think his improvement, the way he's grown, his confidence, everything about the guy, I cannot stop being impressed with him this year. Um, he's been derided from day one. Oh, he's a pay driver. He's just brought his way into the team. He's more than that, and I think deserves a lot more credit than that. So here's, uh, here's some more of the good stuff from Mr. Sorokin. You were my driver of the day at the last race. Um, no, I think you, I think you thoroughly deserve it. Um, do you feel some of your performances are going unnoticed due to the car that you have at your disposal? I wouldn't say it, you know as strongly as, as you say, but it is difficult for sure. I honestly think that probably the race I did in Budapest, looking at uh, all the you know things I had to manage through the race, need to consider. I, I would probably say from my personal you know performances and how I managed it, it's probably been even slightly stronger than Spa. I mean, they, they both, uh, I would, you know, being honest, I would say they were really much as, as good as I could do, but yeah, that's the problem, you know, like the race in Budapest, everybody would, uh, I mean, no one even think about it could be a good race. It's, I mean, it's been not many people I spoke with who could be happy with it, but uh, I purely sure it was from, I mean, again, from what we could. So it is difficult, obviously, it is difficult. Uh, but again, you know, from my side, again, it's, it's not much I can do. So, you know, you just try to work hard and hope that one day, uh, you know, you will get what you deserve. Do you feel that you're growing inside the team, not just with stature, but with confidence as well, to be able to tell them what you want from the car, how to change the car, how to get yourself and the team and the car to a place where you can bring it home in the points? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Obviously, this is what I tried straight away from the beginning of the year, of course, with a lot of you know, new things for me. I still needed a little bit of time to settle down in you know, F1. Weekends go so quickly that kind of, since then I cannot really have a, like a proper time to, you know, like to you know, keep it calm, you know, to take some time to think about and then come back and, and do the things. It's been always a bit rushed and so on, so it's been a bit difficult to, you know, like started straight away on you know on top of everything so like in the beginning of the year I just let it go for some other things and was like purely concentrating on the driving and the work I'm doing in the car but yeah I mean from from the onwards step by step I think I yeah I'm growing up for sure uh, you know I think my position in the team gets better and stronger and uh, and yeah, I mean, it's uh, as a team where we are moving forward. Unfortunately, we don't see that much on the, you know, purely on the timesheets. But in terms of the work we are doing, that's that's obvious. And you're laying the foundations for obviously what what will come next year as well. Are you still going to be around next year with the team? That's a good question. Uh, I would say I obviously hope I will. Uh, to be very honest, I don't think it's something I have to to be worried too much, as I say. Uh, I think I perfectly know my position in the team. Team perfectly knows what I can give them, what what I am, how good we are working together. So there is nothing which is worrying me, honestly. Uh, but you know, same time, if you want a concrete answer right now, 
I'm not sure I can I can really answer. I'm not sure I can I really know it. So. Now, it was a happy weekend and a happy hunting ground in Belgium for Max Verstappen. Pretty much the closest thing that he's got to a home Grand Prix in Belgium. Uh, yeah, half Belgian, half Dutch, uh, as his mother uh, is, of course, is, of course, Belgian. Um, was delighted to be on the podium, but it was a lonely race. Ferrari and Mercedes, both with the step up in power unit. Ultimately, Renault just not able to compete. It was a podium, but a distant one. What does that mean coming here? With expectations being low, is it easier to surpass those expectations? You know, should things go their way? It's a tough spot for Red Bull. They know it, we know it, and things might not get to a place where they can compete legitimately again, shall we say, until we get to Singapore. Max, great result last time out in Spa. Um, <laughs> but quite a way back. Does it confirm how much of a step Ferrari and Mercedes made with that last power unit compared to you guys? Uh, probably again a little bit, um, but you know we always have to look at ourselves and during the race, of course, you know initially you already lost like 10 seconds compared to them. Um, but yeah, the car, the car was performing really well um, and that's what we have to focus on because that's the thing we, we can control. And um, I think we did well with a skinny rear wing like that to, to find a balance and um, yeah, of course, happy to be on the podium in, in front of my home crowd because the, the previous years, they haven't been the best there. But um, yeah, it, was, it was very nice to, to finally you know, have a good result. This isn't a track that you're expected to be competitive on. Do those kind of low expectations make it easier for you to outperform? Um, you know, also, you know, Kimi uh, didn't finish the race and then Valtteri to come from the back. So normally, realistically, it's, it's fifth. Um, so looking here at Monza, I think it's going to be even more tricky, but never say never. Um, I think we just have to be, be there, you know, in case something happens. That's also what we did in Spa uh, quite well. So we have to focus to, to do exactly the same thing. Now, nothing from Lewis Hamilton today. Uh, he'd been allowed off media duties in the paddock due to personal reasons. I uh, don't know what they are as personal reasons. We won't pry either. So we spoke to Valtteri Bottas, some talk in the press coming into this race. Uh, that, with the championship reaching that critical juncture, he would uh, be made by the team to play that wingman role uh, for the remainder of the season. We'll talk about that and, of course, the competitive difference between Mercedes and Ferrari coming into Ferrari's home race on the basis that, of course, Spa had for so many years been the Mercedes playground, being the power circuit, playing to the advantage of the power unit. But Ferrari had the edge there. What does that mean both for here and for the remainder of the season? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, in, in Spa, we definitely saw that uh, Ferrari uh, on, on Sunday, they were quicker than us. Um, you know, Lewis and Sepp, they were running you know, close to each other in the beginning, but Sebastian could just kind of control the race, so they definitely had the upper hand there. That's why we we expect coming here that they, you know, we are going to be the ones chasing them, um, and we really need to improve our package if we want to win this championship. So we are very motivated. You know, we are, uh, you know, I, I think worried. I don't know. I think for me, it's a little bit the wrong word. I think it's just we 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 know the fact that it's going to be a big big battle all the way until the end of the year. Um, and we accept the situation that we need to improve um, with the, with the car in all the areas, um, and just the work spirit is, is really good. You know, we are not standing still for sure. And so, to the focal point of every Italian Grand Prix, Scuderia Ferrari. We're going to talk to both Kimi Raikkonen and to Sebastian Vettel uh, about their chances here at their home race, and for Kimi as well. The sort of the continuing question we thought he was going to be out of a seat this year it now looks like he's very much going to still hang on to his seat for next year how much longer will Kimi keep racing and I don't say that in a oh, how much longer is Kimi going to be racing I say it because he's to my mind racing possibly better than he has done in years he looks confident he looks enthused he looks you know as passionate as Kimi Raikkonen ever looks <laughs> uh, actually quite passionate and you can tell that from his answers when he's given good like flow in answers it's because he's loving what he's doing I mean, he hates doing interviews, but he's loving driving. And Seb, of course, as well. The, the focal point of the Tifosi's joy this weekend uh, in Monza. It's always a, a special one for the guys in red. You have that pace coming here this weekend. The car looks superb. It looked superb in Spa. Can you bring the Tifosi the win they want so badly? I don't know. I can't predict, but uh, I'm sure that you know, everybody inside the team, including myself, will do everything we can 
to make it happen. But uh, the best chance of doing that is to yeah go one step at a time and not trying to rush things. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to get back in the car and I think just enjoying the, the the weekend. If we can do well on top of that, that's a bonus. Are you enjoying your driving as much as you used to? Because it looks like you're having a great time this year. Yeah, the driving I always have. I think people always talk about motivations and this and that, but driving is not the, uh, you know, I wouldn't be here if I wouldn't enjoy driving. It's the only thing when I'm here. Obviously, there's a lot of other stuff around it, but, uh, yeah, you know, I feel that I can drive pretty well still, so um, I enjoy the racing. So. I mean, you're not drawing your pension yet, but how many years do you reckon you can continue at this level? I don't know. I don't think there's a time limit. And I mean, I said earlier in the press conference that maybe one day you wake up and you you lost your speed. So who knows? I mean, I, I have no idea. Hopefully, you know, it's a scary thought that you wake <laughs> up one morning and you cannot do it. Ten years ago, I was wondering sometimes in the winter that uh, maybe I cannot uh, try fast anymore when it comes to first test. But turned out to be always a wrong, uh, wrong worry so far. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure there will be a date at some point that you know, it's just not happening anymore easily. So, you know, maybe then it's better to do other things. But uh, so far it's been okay. So, Well, folks, that is your lot from Paddock Pass here in Monza. The biggest question of always for the Tifosi out in the grandstands, can Ferrari take a win on a home soil? If you look at the pace they had in Spa, you would certainly assume or think that the pace advantage lies with them. But Mercedes will be doing everything to try and cut it back and take that all-important win in their biggest rivals back garden i don't know i think it's looking like it might be a red wash here uh, much to the joy of the tifosi anyway anything can happen uh, and a lot of things often do happen here in monza really looking forward to it thanks so much for following along enjoy the weekend but from us on paddock pass that's your lot